Hi YouTube, I'm John Muller and this is my portable computer collection. I decided to make this video for two reasons. One, I want to show almost all of my portable computer collection in this video. And secondly, vintage computing festivals, including the VCF Southeast that I've attended in the past year, are not being held this year due to coronavirus. This will be a virtual exhibit to replace the one I would have held this year. So to start, I'll go from the back and note that these are roughly chronologically organized. Starting from the left in the very back row is a Fujitsu Pocket PC Plus. This was the last of the Pocket PCs after Fujitsu acquired the company. It has a faster 8186 compatible NEC V30 processor and it can use PCMCIA flashcards. Just to the right of that is quite a hefty machine over here, the Random Colleague which is actually a Cincinnati product. It's a combined word processor and VT220 terminal clone with a built-in 2400 baud modem. This will be the topic of a future review. Stay tuned. Finally, on the right of the back row is the venerable TI Silent 700 Model 703 paper terminal. It operates at 300 baud and it works as a printer, as a terminal, and as a typewriter. All on thermal paper, as its name suggests, it is indeed quiet. I've already demoed this, but I think there will be plenty more opportunities in the future to show its capabilities for everything from printing the news to ASCII art to just fun using it as a terminal. Now let's go back into the early 80s with the Sharp PC1500. This was also sold by... Radio Shack as the Tandy PC2, and it was one of the early pocket computers. I have the PC1500 as well as the later PC1500A, which has more RAM. I haven't tested the PC1500, but this PC1500A works great and even has a RAM expansion. Another 16K of RAM, I believe 24K total here, and I think I'll have to check the PC1500, I think is, is 4K standard. These have basic, but they can also be programmed in the equivalent of Z80 assembly language, Z80 machine code, given these have LH5801 rough Z80 equivalents. Now that's just the pocket computer itself. To the left is the CE130, which is a combined printer and cassette interface. I haven't used this. Probably the NICADs inside are shot. I don't think I'll be able to use the printer, but being able just to passively use the cassette interface will prove incredibly useful for trying out different programs on this for a future video. But anyway, that's probably the oldest member of the collection. Now, just to the right of that is a... Radio Shack TRS-80 Mall 100 portable computer. This works great on four AA batteries. I'm going to review this in the future as well as put Rex CPM, a Rex module that runs the CPM operating system on this so I can use fourth various editors and terminal emulators instead of just standard Model 100 applications on it. I love the keyboard, I love the interface, and I'll be putting this back where it's cool and say, you know, I'm noticing a little bit of, of um, color change in the LCD I didn't see when it was in the air conditioning. But anyway, a very nice part of the collection, and I got this for free from Jim Craven of Milford, Ohio. Thank you so much, Jim, for donating this to my collection. Now, just below this are a couple of Texas Instruments calculators. I guess you wouldn't say these are portable computers, but they are Turing complete. These are programmable calculators. 
uh, TI-66 I plan to review very soon. It's in a similar for form factor to the HP Voyager series, and indeed it's part of the TI Galaxy series. It's very slow, but it has incredibly good battery life. This works great. Uh, it's in excellent condition, and it gets that battery life on just a pair of button cell LR44 batteries. To the right of that is really the flagship of TI's algebraic operating system programmable calculators like the 66. And really everything the TI-58 and 59 should have been. Like the TI-66, it has, it has mnemonics to make it easier to program, and it has a cassette interface in the back. I plan to review this as well in the future. For those who know about other TI products, you'll notice it has a similar fourth form factor to the TI-74 basic calc. Unlike the basic calc, it's programmed in keystrokes with corresponding mnemonics, not in basic. Those are really the oldest machines. Then we'll start getting into the later 80s and 1990s as I go up. Just behind the printer here is a Tandy WP2 word processor that's ZAD powered. I have expanded so it has a total of 160K of RAM. Excellent display. I've reviewed this previously. Very, very nice keyboard. Just to the right of this is another ZAD slab form factor computer. You'll notice I have, I've collected many of these. And unlike the WP2, this runs CPM right out of the box with, you know, a little bit of installation. It doesn't require a lot of hardware modifications to run CPM. It's a ZAD powered slab computer. It has BBC Basic built in and ProText and as well as uh, calculator and diary, you know, PIM functions. But with a little bit of tweaking, you can run CPM off an SRAM card. Very versatile machine, really powerful, built-in parallel and serial. I hope to do more with this in the future. It has a small and passionate community. Now before I jump into the 90s, let's go back a little bit. Not all of this is portable computers. I've also included some portable computer equipment, such as thermal printers, the Seiko, uh, Seiko. Uh, DPU 414, which uses four and a half inch uh, roughly paper, four and three eighths maybe, and this was donated used uh, lab equipment. Really excellent thermal printer. You can print graphics with this as well as 20, 40, and 80 column text. Another printer I use is the HP 82240A thermal printer that I previously reviewed. In the future, I plan to print from various vintage computer emulators that I run on Palm and Pocket PC devices. So stay tuned for that, and please enjoy my previous review. Now, what's up front on the left side? Well, look, it is the HP 200LX, the HP 100LX, HP 95LX with 1 meg of RAM, and the original HP 95LX with 512K of RAM. I love these machines. They're by far my favorite vintage pocket computers. I pair them with a RAV Power File Hub Plus, a pocket Linux router that's battery powered so I can do internet related tasks with these. They're still great for learning x86 assembly, writing C on the go, playing games, taking notes. You can print from them wirelessly. You could print to the E2240A with the application. I've shown that in previous videos. Just wonderful machines with battery lives of 30, 40 hours or more just on two AA cells. I have many of these palm tops and I love all of them. I love the power and versatility of the 100 and 200 LX and I love the simplicity and the display of the 95 LX very very much. Now that I can use compact flash cards in these 95LX palm tops, they're just, wow, they're, there's so much I can do with them. 
Okay, so I am about to jump in the 90s now. Before I do that, I'll also point out a couple weird members of the collection that I guess we can see our computers in some ways. One is this Olympus DSLR-ish D600L digital camera. I think Lazy Game Reviews has shown that you can play Doom or something on cameras of this vintage. I haven't tried it out, but I think it uses... Um, Multimedia flashcard, so it should be easy to work with that. That was getting thrown out of a lab. And to the left of that is a much newer camera that I might highlight in a future video for the Canon Hack Development Kit. You can use that because this is a Canon. It's a Canon PowerShot A580, 8 megapixels that runs off two AA batteries. And it's not just good as a point-and-shoot camera, it's got a manual mode, and with CHDK there's so much more you can do with this. You can set time-lapse and use this for you know astrophotography or sticking it in a weather balloon and what have you. Really nice to keep. I think I've had this at least, at least five years, if not more. I've definitely collected all these computers over more than a five-year period and tried to get them as inexpensively as possible. By that I mean $50 or less per item. And I'll put that away. There we go. That hang out there. Okay. And now let's move in the, into the 90s and start in the Second to last row, what is this fine slab of green translucent plastic that I'm staring at now? Well, this is an AlphaSmart 3000 word processor. I've reviewed this, and one commenter pointed out that the employees who started AlphaSmart had left Apple. Note the common design features to Apple computers, like that command key. So now that all makes sense. The AlphaSmart word processors. I have the 3000. Let's skip the quick pad for a second. I also have the Dana Wireless. Really nice Paul Moss laptop, also built by AlphaSmart. Incredibly powerful, incredibly versatile. I've reviewed both of these. Check out those reviews for more on these slabs. Now in the middle is a machine of similar vintage. That's 1998 for the, for the Alpha Smart 3000. That's 2001 to, or 2003 or so for the Dana Wireless. The QuickPad Pro is from between 2001 and 2004, and it's a DOS slab computer. Unfortunately, not quite CGA in resolution, and it was hoped to be a Tandy Model 100 killer. We saw that earlier, but that never panned out. And Really, I don't think there was quite the market for such a machine by 2004. Okay, now let's go to the final section of my collection. We have a set of palms and an iPad right up here. This Palm 3, I think I've had for at least 15 years. It still works great. I've replaced the display with one from the Palm 3X. I'll review this, of course, in a future video. And I think I still have directions to uh, P4th or something in here. Yeah, I've forgotten. Maybe, maybe not. Still in its original case. That's, oh, Palm Pilot case, not, not Palm 3. Again, 1998, roughly, vintage. What do we have over here? A Palm M125. I think this is really the best of the M100 series. It still runs on AAA batteries, but it has an SD card slot. There we go. I think I have a 256 meg card. And that's great. You can replace the batteries easily, but you can also back up the contents of the internal RAM storage. So you get the best of both worlds. It's Palmos 4. A ton of apps can run on it. Excellent battery life. I use rechargeable Anna loops in mine. Again, I'll have to review this very soon. As far as the newer Palms, I have a Palm Z22 that was a gift in 2005, Christmas 2005 for my parents, and still works great now. 
and a palm tungsten C over here that I will be using for a ton of vintage computing emulators like Tiny Elf that we can see here. I'm planning to also do some calculator programming with Free42 on this. It's relatively powerful having a 400 something megahertz ARM class processor. So it's, so it's useful for a lot more applications than the 68K powered M125. And again, I'm hoping I'll review the M125 and Tungsten C in the near future. Also with the Tungsten C, I have a ton of demos that I'm hoping to do. Emulate everything. Just to the right of that, sandwiched between the palms, is an HP IPAC. I'm trying to remember the exact model. I think um, HX2410 or, or something like that from around 2004, 2005. I did not spend a penny on this. It was a donation, a gift, at the Vintage Computing Festival of Southeast in 2019. Thank you to whoever donated to me. I'll have plenty more videos on this coming up. Now, newer than that are a couple computer and computer-ish uh, devices, an At Games FireCore Sega Genesis emulator. It plays pretty well. I saw there's some hacks for this to improve the audio and organizing your games from Brazilian hackers who used the Tech Toy Brazilian version of this console. In a future video, I will review this this pocket genesis and also try out those hacks and see how they improve gameplay now in front of that is not a pda but a cell phone what cell phone is this why a samsung galaxy s relay why did i get this well it's a android phone but it doesn't run a very old version of android i think it's um, gingerbread or uh not Gingerbread, uh, KitKat, Android 4, so there are a lot of applications that still run on it. And it has a really wonderful, wonderful keyboard. And for that reason, I have a Linux CH root running on it. It works pretty smoothly. The battery life hasn't been the best, but the keyboard is just unparalleled. I think the Motorola Photon comes closest to it, and I didn't spend my money on that. I spent my $30 on this. And it is worth it. I just wish the battery was a bit better. Now, we have some weirdness over here. Very, very weird pocket computers that are kind of distinct from those palms. What do we have here on the left? This is a Zip-It Z2. It was designed as a wireless Wi-Fi me messenger for kids but it runs Linux as router firm or router hardware and, and firmware essentially. So it's really, really easy to hack this to run OpenWRT and various other programs packaged for OpenWRT. I think people even got Ubuntu and Debian and, and other Linux distros running on this. I think my most urgent review and review most likely to come out uh, immediately after this video will be the one of the Zip-It C2 along with its nice carry case. Okay, so these other not so retro pocket computers are the RAV Power File Hub Plus with its uh, Ethernet and USB expansion ports there. Pocket OpenWRT powered router. Wonderful, wonderful toy. And the M5 stack. So M5 stack has a bunch of ESP32 development kits and, and this is one of them. It has three buns on the display and you can think of it as a open source smartwatch, built-in Wi-Fi, built-in Bluetooth, built-in micro SD card slot, IS2 or IS2C, I2C, various GPIO pins, 
there's a firmware for this that I'll probably flash today or tomorrow that includes everything from an internet radio to an oscilloscope, a very cheap oscilloscope. Thanks to a Reddit competition, I was able to get this almost for free with the Amazon gift card I got. Lots, lots more with this powerful little kid to come up on my channel in the future. And finally, last but not least, the graphing and programmable calculators that, for the most part, are HPs. I showed a few older TIs, but, you know, these are newer, thus... They're on the right side of my collection. A free TI-83 Plus I got from Dwayne Adrian. Thank you for sending this to me. An HP 49G Plus I've used for my COVID simulations. An HP 35S RPN calculator. And TI-84 Plus. Way improved over the 83 Plus. I'm definitely going to be reviewing these. I might program some games on the 83 or 84 or do some more demos. I have to think on the 35S what types of programs might run, given that I'm going to create a free 42 class very, very soon. But amazing key field, great battery life, and I've already used it for COVID simulations and just, you know, various calculation and mathematical tasks in the not-too-distant past. And with that, you have seen just about all of my portable computer collection. The one or two exceptions are the Nokia N810 internet tablet and the Nokia 9290 communicator. I have reviews of those. PDA uh, of that PDA and that uh, cell phone, but unfortunately they're not uh, with me now. They're in my apartment in Atlanta. But anyway, I hope you appreciate this quick tour of my collection. I'll have lots more reviews to come up in the future. If you have ideas or if there's demos you want me to do with one of these portable computers, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Bye now.